Hello everyone, this is Tales from the Paw Side, the ASAMB podcast. Welcome, or welcome back. Um, January has officially ended, so let's not delay any longer with bringing you our episode 7, our newest episode of Tales from the Paw Side. Um, in this episode, we will be talking about capacity for care, um, what it means in the animal welfare world, and how it affects us at the Animal Services Center of the Messina Valley uh, specifically. Um, I will be having our executive director, Clint Thacker, um, come in and talk with me and talk about capacity for care and how it directly impacts the ASMV and how we are personally navigating it, um, and also to get his insight and his perspective on the topic just in general. Um, and then, of course, we'll wrap up with our upcoming events that are going to be happening the month of February. Um, if you're interested in learning um, what all factors into capacity for care, um, or if you'd like to just um, know what we have going on this coming month, stick around and listen into this episode. And of course, with me, I have our executive director, Clint Dacker. Um, he's here to help uh, talk about just the capacity for care and how it affects us at the ASCMV specifically. Yeah, it's a, it's a big topic, one that we could talk about for a long time. Yeah, definitely. And something I learned today, um, a few hours ago, is that it's actually a, a project that Dr. Haddon herself was working on for her master's degree. So that's pretty, it's pretty exciting, it's pretty important, and um, it's a new, I guess maybe newly, um, like an up-and-coming kind of discuss- field of discussion in animal welfare. I feel like it's been talked about a lot more frequently than maybe it has when I first started working here in animal welfare like five years ago. Um, so it's something that we're all trying to address, you know, and get out, get the word out to, to the public, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely been the last 10 years or so. It's been a big push to figure out what your capacity of care is, figure out how to handle that capacity of care, how to increase it or how to decrease it. Um, so in general, and I know there's probably several different definitions that every human animal welfare organization might have its own slightly different definition. Um, well, in your in your opinion, what is uh, capacity for care? Well, the capacity for care is the number of animals that a, a shelter or a facility can care for in the way that they want to care for them. So they have to have some guidelines or some, some minimum qualifications, minimum standards set. And then off of that, you go and you kind of backtrack and say, okay, well, we, in order to do this, we have to have this many people on staff uh, with these, this number of animals. And so you kind of back your way into it and figure it out. Uh, and that's what we did. That's what we had to do is when we figured out our capacity of care. And um, something that maybe like a lot of people who don't work in animal welfare might not know, kind of like the nuances um, that comes to capacity for care. Um, it's not, I guess, just how many like human beings can take care of X amount of animals. It's also um, if they have anything additional that they need, like sick dogs. There are, at least currently at the ASCMV, certain diseases that we are not able to treat right now that are uh, like they are treatable stuff like ringworm or parvo um, we can't keep that here um, because not only are we short staffed with kennels we're also extremely short staffed with the medical staff and that kind of also falls into the capacity for care of like um, the manpower when it comes to reasonably um, and effectively care for clean up and uh, treat even special specific diseases yeah you're, you're, you're right on I I believe that you you have to assess the situation and your your capacity of care is going to ebb and flow as well. Yeah. Uh, you can set a hard number and say we want to stay at this number. However, if you if you have somebody quit their job or get terminated, then that's going to affect your quality or your capacity of care because you no longer have that person. Uh, it goes along just what you were saying. It, you have to factor everything in from sickness and animals to your capacity of, of animals that are coming in. Like in 2023, we had on average 29 animals a day come in. Yeah. So you've got to take that into consideration when you're figuring out a capacity. That means when you're full, that 29 animals need to leave. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's continual. The constant struggle with trying to maintain capacity for care here at the ASMV at the ASCMV, excuse me, it not only impacts like the animals, the number of animals we can house, but it also can add additional stress 
like to the staff in general because we do want to at least keep as many adoptable animals as a healthy adoptable animals as we possibly yeah. can um, but we can't um, you know stuff our kennels full of dogs um, just because they're a healthy and adoptable um, that would definitely overload the employees like the human beings that have to work with them I know um, when I first started here at the ASMV about five years ago I was in the kennels um, it was before we had Dr. Haddon um, we had three dogs to a single kennel and that was definitely um, a, a, like a lot it was a phys like a lot more physically exhausting a lot more mentally exhausting um, and an overload of work like that can you know lead to like burnout um, a lot of people calling off all the time like the loss of like the drive of even wanting to be here working it's a kind of like a like a vicious cycle not only does it affect the employees who get burned stressed out maybe quit maybe just um, don't feel like they can't take it anymore also of course affects the animals that we are currently um, housing um, it affects their their quality of care the amount of animals that can be cared for if people are you know always like uh, either quitting uh, or calling off it, it's it's kind of it's like a negative feedback loop is maybe what I'm thinking of it just kind of snowballs um, so it's something we need to address and kind of try and work with effectively to, to help not only the animals but also the people that are a part of the, the team yeah when somebody quits what we do is we have them fill out a questionnaire and on that questionnaire that's a lot of the questions was is why are you leaving you know, and then they may say overwhelming or burnout and we ask for more information and so and we read those every it goes to every single uh, supervisor and they review it and we're able to see so the, the thing is the solutions how do you go about fixing a problem that um, is bad no matter which way you look at it because we have staff that's getting burned out so okay well let's reduce our capacity of care so we don't have a lot of animals well then we're euthanizing and the public gets upset you know why are you euthanizing so many animals you just built a center uh, that has so many animals you can put in there and and we're like no it's filled you know we, right. um, this old center we never said that the new center was going to take place of it so it's it's a continual uh, like you said a uh, uh, a give and take and it's it's a hard one to balance yeah um because i know like at least in the new building um if you ever wanted to like we of course we encourage people to stop by even for adoptions or even just to like be around you know hang out socialize yeah. with dogs meet them and say hi but you'll see um there's never a time in the new pods where there's just a single dog to a kennel it's always filled to in like two dogs to a kennel and that's the maximum that is uh that they were constructed for uh, adding any more dogs to a single kennel would increase, I think, the stress on each animal um, in the specific kennel. You know, two dogs is enough. They get to have their own space if they want to. Adding a third or a fourth, um, they would start to get a little, you know, like a cramps or crazy and stress. And that yeah. and bad behavior leads to, you know, dog stress, can leads to dog fights, leads to a whole um, bad slew of uh, behaviors that we want to mitigate by only having a dog with one buddy rather than multiple just even if it looks like um we can fit more it's it's not reasonable it's not it's not fair to the animals to the dogs to give them to give them extra uh kennel mates yeah uh so some things that we've tried to do to to help with the with our capacity to care one of them is uh, we increased our adoption hours with the new center that's why we designed it the way that we did is that animals can be on the outside while we clean inside and they can be on the inside when we clean outside. Uh, so our adoption hours are now, they went from 12 to five or six, and now they're at, I'm sorry, 12 to five to four, and now they're at nine in the morning until five o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And that is huge. We, we have people come in for adoptions and to see animals at nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And we are now able to accommodate that. Um, and I know you ran some numbers showing the number of animals that are coming from the old center and the new center and things are looking good. We're excited about that, about that extension that we have on those hours and it really helps. Also the regular adoption specials, pretty much every month we have something going on that allow uh, sales and specials. Uh, I think just how we have the price range, uh, the pricing scale done for adoptions, I mean it's it's 
what, $150? Yeah. $150. Uh, and that's for an unsterilized animal that um, has it just came here or just became available. Yeah. And then there's discounts to go with that. So then if the animal's been here longer than three months, then you get a discount. If the animal's already sterilized, you get a discount. And that is, and it, it goes discounts all the way down to like $50, $50 sometimes. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it points people <clears throat> more to the animals that can go hold and save day and that can get out quicker. And what does that do? Opens up a kennel. So we don't have to care for the animal. We don't have to euthanize for the animal that it's gone. There's a kennel available. So adoptions is, and adoption specials is one thing that we really try to do differently. You work really hard on transfers. You do a fantastic job. Yeah, and that is something that me and my coworker, so there's two rescue coordinators, you know, working, trying to network, um, make new rescue partnerships with new rescues nationwide and try to cultivate and keep working with the ones that we currently have. Um, it is something that uh, has been a lifesaver for like hundreds of animals, like every month. It, it, it helps. Um, it helps with the adoptions as well um, to increase our life-saving numbers. Um, but of course, adoption and rescue, the live release uh, is a major part, but sometimes it's a battle between our, our active live release and just the amount of animals that come in, the intakes themselves. So another part that we're trying to look at and trying to uh, work with is managing uh, the intake, the amount of animals that come in, because I know like Clint said, on average 29, uh, so that's a couple, multiple dozens of dogs and cats coming in as strays, owner surrenders, they're just coming into the facility, um, can kind of hurt us when we happen to have like a, a low adoption day where only like three dogs and a cat got adopted and then that's kind of a struggle um, to deal with on a daily basis. So we're, we are trying to actively encourage different ways to divert the intakes and I know our office staff when it comes to trying to manage and divert some intakes that come in um, especially when it comes to owner surrenders um, our office assistants uh, try to heavily encourage and push uh, home to home.org we have a home to home profile um, and that is a whole uh, it's a nice service that is being offered we we host the platform uh, so it's of no cost to the owner um, you rehome the dog yourself, the dog or, or cat uh, stays with you. Um, you get to approve or deny any potential adopters um, and everything is in your hands. It doesn't have to come into our custody and then we have the control over the adoption. And a lot of people prefer that. Whether, well, no matter what reason they're homing for, they want to make sure that their, their, their pet gets to a place where they feel comfortable with and they get the option to do that with Home to Home. Um, we also have uh, Surrender to Foster as another option that our office assistants like to push and we also like to um, advertise if uh, you want me to own or surrender your animals, um, but you're willing to, we, we ask to foster them. So they're still in your home um, and they are um, ASCMV animals, they're in our custody, but they're available for adoption, they're available for rescue, and they get to stay at home with you out of the shelter, so healthy, stress-free, um, and until they get to either get adopted or go to rescue. Um, and that helps a lot to alleviate the population that we have in-house. That's a, that was something that we we're really glad that we have implemented. Yeah, and the next two are some of my favorites too. There's the first one is Stray Foster. This is when somebody finds an animal and they bring it into the ASCMV. And we ask, can you hold on to that animal, try to find the owner? And they say, yes, we can, we can do that. So you get to man, take the animal for a walk, you get to go knock on doors, you do anything you can to try and find that animal owner. Uh, and that's always, that's a good one because everybody feels successful at that time, right? Uh, the other one is fostering in general. We have a foster coordinator, Vanessa. She's been on this before. She does fantastic work. Uh, she is, uh, we're really pushing uh, fostering right now because that is such a lifesaver. All you do is you just sign up on our via our website. Uh, you can sign up to either t a time to talk to Vanessa or you can sign up, uh, literally fill out all the paperwork and it gets sent to Vanessa. And you can take an injured animal, you can take a healthy animal, you can take a sick animal, take a dog, a cat, a guinea pig, anything we have here <laughs> because anything that you take is going to save that animal's life and another life because we have to be making room again for that on average 20 animals coming in so we have to have 29 animals leaving as well uh those are great too yeah. those two options the last one is uh petco love lost so petco is a is the store you know of 
Petco Love is the charitable arm of Petco. And then Petco Love Lost is uh, a platform that they have made. I believe it was also, it was also called uh, Finding Rover, I think. And they purchased it and revamped it. Anyways, it's, it's big because if we can get everybody to be using it, like in the state of New Mexico, then it is, so you go on there, you fill out your lost animal information and somebody fills out, well, I found this dog, they phone, and they'll, they'll cross and they'll find each other <laughs> with the information, the area that it's in, all of that, that is all cross-referenced. And then that animal never has to come to the center. That's the part that we love. <laughs> Definitely. It's, it's, it's great when there are avenues for the community themselves to kind of help out and yeah. you know, get animals back into the homes where they belong and find new homes um, without having to have like stop at the, at the shelter, have them be um, intaked and in, housed inside, um, kind of cut out that middle part and just kind of get straight to the source and, you know, participate in finding homes and reuniting families like their own way. And I'm sure that, that helps you know, the community feel a lot more involved and able to be engaged, um, which, you know, helps everyone feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Well, thank you so much um, for stopping by and chatting again. Yeah, I no love problem. having you on here to talk and stuff. It's really nice. I appreciate it. I enjoy being here. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And of course, now it's time for Henry's Corner, where we get to talk about all of our upcoming events that are going to be going on in the month of February. Um, of course, we have adoption events every Saturday of every month. So we'll start off, um, of course, for the month of February. On February 3rd, this coming Saturday, we're going to have an adoption event at the Village Hardware that is located in Hatch, New Mexico. So we're going to go out to Hatch and hopefully some Hatch residents will stop by, um, meet some of our awesome adoptable dogs, and hopefully take them home. And we'll be there at the Village Hardware from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then the following Saturday, February 10th, we will be at Petco. We'll be there uh, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll have some adoptable dogs ready for you guys to meet. And since you're already there at Petco, you can get them, you know, fitted with their new gear, new collar leashes, and maybe a toy to take home to as well. Um, we definitely encourage you all to stop by the Petco on February 10th. The following Saturday after that, February 17th, we will be at PetSmart from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., of course, with some awesome adoptable dogs ready to meet, you know, their potential future family member. We encourage you all to stop on by. And finally, for the final Saturday of February, February 24th, we will be at the Tractor Supply, and we will be there from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we encourage you all, um, if you're in the market for a new dog, come on by at any one of these off-site adoption events. You get to see our our awesome adoptable dogs. They're ready to go home, already spayed or neutered, microchip vaccinated, just ready to, you know, head on out, get loaded up in your car, and go on to their new life. You get to see them in action. Our volunteers there walk them, handle them, and get to hang out with them, socialize with them, kind of see them kind of enjoy life, hanging out in a new area. Something that I would love to talk about with you all now is that in the month of February, we will also be having our next drive through vaccination clinic. Um, we will be having it on Sunday, um, the February 25th, so that is the last Sunday of the month. We will, of course, our vaccination clinics start at 9 a.m., they end at 2 p.m., but we encourage you all, um, you know, come on by anytime. You know, we, we get a huge line at the beginning. The line usually starts forming around 7.38. Sometimes we even have people coming in at 7 a.m. when we're still setting everything up. Um, so come on by whenever you can. Usually there is no line by 12 p.m., 1 p.m., especially at 2 p.m. Um, so don't be discouraged with a long line at the very beginning. Um, the line does not always stay there. Uh, come on by anytime, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We will have our first 200 microchips implanted are gonna be uh, free to the pet owner. And that is a courtesy thanks to a sponsorship by the McEwen Foundation. We are extremely grateful for their sponsorship of 200 microchips. That means 200 microchips, 200 pets get to be microchipped at no cost to the owner. Uh, and of course, we will also have um, the Distemper Parvo vaccines for the dogs and the Feline Distemper for the cats. Um, those vaccines will be sponsored by Petco Love, of course, at no cost to the adopter. 
Um, and we will also be offering rabies vaccines, kennel cough vaccines, and then after the 200 microchips, microchips will be offered, and all of this will be at $10 each. So it's still a low cost, um, still much cheaper than you know making an appointment at a vet clinic, getting it done there. Um, we do everything at cost. Um, so it's as, as affordable as possible for you guys. We just wanna make it accessible um, to get all of their pets, all the pet owners in the Las Cruces and Donana County area um, vaccinated, microchipped, and, and as healthy as safe as possible. So I definitely encourage you all to come by and mark your calendars for Sunday, February 25th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That will be our next upcoming drive through clinic. And um, we don't have that many questions um, that were sent to us. We do have one um, that I did find a little bit funny. Um, and it's an, an anonymous question um, asking um, why, why, do the, why does the shelter uh, stink, I guess, <laughs> which is a little bit funny. And I know that that's shelters in general, um, you know, we house uh, multiple hundreds of dogs. You know, it's two dogs to a kennel. Um, dozens of dogs that you get to see um, over at our new pods, definitely. They're animals, you know, they poop all day. They're smelly, you know. It kind of comes with the territory of being an animal shelter, you know, housing a, a large number of dogs and cats at a single, at any single time. Um, you know, if you think your one pet smells bad uh, from time to time, different points throughout the day, you can't imagine that scaled up to a hundred or a couple hundred it's something that we deal with. We, as employees, are accustomed to it, but it, it, it is something that, uh, you know, potential adopters or people that haven't been around animal shelter before might be a little bit startled by it, but it's just to remind you, you know, um, a bunch, bunch of animals live here, spend their time here, but something we all, you know, get used to. Um, of course, if you have any other questions that you would like for us to answer in our upcoming, the end of February episode, episode eight, um, feel free to go to our website, ASCMB.org, on our resources tab, Conversations with the Center, it'll take you to the link where you can submit your question via jot forms. Um, if you're listening to this on Spotify, I believe there's also a spot to answer questions, or to ask questions directly on Spotify itself, um, or you can also just, you know, email us, ASCMB at ASCMB.org, um, if you'd like to, if you happen to have something you want us to address in our next episode. But of course, thank you all for listening um, to episode 7, Capacity for Care, the episode of Tales from the Pot Side, and we hope to see you in the next one.